Hello everyone. Welcome to Spring Boot Tutorial Series by JR Academy. My name is Jay Rajan. Thanks for joining again. This is tutorial 7, Stereotype Annotations. And in this tutorial we will discuss things such as what is Stereotype Annotations, what are Stereotype Annotations in Spring Boot, what are the features and how we can use them. So let's dive in in this tutorial. But before getting into Stereotype Annotation, let's see what is Stereotype. So when we say Americans like coffee or Britishers like tea, it is a stereotype. It is not true all the time, but it is a general idea about them. So dictionary meaning of stereotype is a widely held but fixed and oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of person or thing. Means general idea about something. And annotation is, as I mentioned in previous tutorial, it is a tag on the code that gives some information about particular piece of code. So stereotype annotation is a tag on the class that gives general information about that class. So thing is when spring came in picture it was little bit confusing and uh, stereotype annotations were good idea to provide general information about which class does what in the spring application. So in spring terms stereotype annotations are the tags on the classes that gives general idea about the role of the class in the application. So while this isn't a good idea, uh, good idea in real life but uh, it is something we will do in spring. So moving forward we have five annotations in total component controller service repository and indexed but indexed is uh, not important right now so we will discuss only first four so let's start with component so component annotation is generic for all spring managed elements so in previous tutorial we have discussed application startup and uh, that time we have seen that uh, at main class level we have component scan annotation and uh, container can scan entire code because of that. So at the time of scanning, when container encounters this annotation on any class, it gives idea to container that this spring uh, this is a spring related class. And uh, container creates the bean of it and make it available for dependency injection. So if any other class dependent on this component, then spring will make sure of injecting into them. So next annotation we have is a controller. And a controller indicates that a particular class serves the role of the controller. And in MVC, controller's role is to direct a traffic or routing the request. So when user requests for something, the request comes to controller. And controller will redirect or reroute the request to exit location based on some request parameters or the some conditions. But in our tutorial series, we're not going to use controller. Instead of that, we will use REST controller. So to understand the difference between controller and REST controller, Let's see the difference between API and REST API. So in MVC, when controller responds, that response will be the view type. So human can read. That means it has HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in it. But REST API is more of internal use. So other system or UI will use the response. So in that case, we need JSON or XML as the response. So for that, in Spring MVC, uh, we have another annotation to get JSON and XML response and uh, that annotation is at the rate response type. So instead of using two annotations, we have REST controller which is a combination of both. So just keep in mind that we will use REST controller instead of controller to create REST APIs. Next we have is a service. So service indicates that a particular class have the role of service and the role of service is to run the business logic. So all business related logic will go in this class. And last one we have is a repository. So it is a marker for the class that fulfills the role of the repository. The role of the repository is to handle the data access logic. So all database access related logic should go in this repository or we can say data access object or DAO class. So additionally, when container will come across this, it will auto configure and enable the translation of exception. So to understand this, uh, let's take an example of Hibernate. So imagine we are using Hibernate as the persistence layer and Hibernate framework have its own native exceptions and uh, every time something goes wrong, Hibernate will throw its native exceptions and Spring need to convert this. So once we annotate any class with repository, by default it will have the ability to convert these native exceptions into data access exceptions, which is the subclass of Spring. So this kind of ability repository will get automatic once we annotate any class with at the rate repository. So all these three controller, service and repository are children or meta annotations of components. That means all the characteristics of component will be in inherited in this uh, three. So that means at the time of component scan container will create the beans of these three and it will be available for dependency injection. That means at the time of component scan container will create the beans of these three 
and it will uh, container will make this beans available for dependency injection with some additional feature so now let's look at the user request flow so every time user requests something here user means anything that it utilize our api not necessarily a human user it could be anything so every time user requests something that request goes to controller and controller will redirect this request to actual service based on some logic or based on some request parameter and then service will take a help of repository to get the data from the database and after that repository will get the data from database and give that data to service and service will run some business logic on it to con to convert this data into user into request uh, form and then it will pass this data to a controller and controller will pass this data to user so this flow can be different but higher level this will be the case so in upcoming tutorial we will create simple project flow with this so there are few things we need to keep in mind about spring boot uh, beans so first thing is what will be the name of the instance so take an example of a new keyword so every time we every time we initialize any object with new keyword we give it some particular name to identify that instance right so uh, in this case container will, container is creating the beans so so by default bean will have the same name as the class name with lower case initial so for example if we have name of the class as emp controller the name of the beans will be emp controller with lower case e we can specify different name using optional value argument of this annotation and another thing is the scope of this beans so in previous tutorials we have discussed the scope and there are five spring bean scope we will discuss this spring bean scope in detail in upcoming tutorials but for now just keep one thing in mind that by default spring beans will have the scope of singleton that means container will create only one instance and it will reuse it but we can change this scope based on our situation so let's now jump into the demo and let's see how we can use them so for demo purpose what i did is i created one simple project and i have added four packages controller repository service and other and in uh, real world also we follow the same technique all the controller will go in controller package all the service will go in service package and like that so if i go inside i have emp controller i have created and i annotate it with at the address controller same way we can create repository same way we can create service and same way we can create component so for demo i have added one more tool with this and we call that tool actuator and uh, in, in upcoming tutorials we will uh, look into this actuator in detail but uh, for now just uh, keep one thing in mind that this actuator tool will help us to keep an eye on our application so what is happening internally the actuator can give the information about that so i have added the dependency of the actuator and let me start this application so i can show you what is happening exactly inside so this application is started now i'm going in postman and because of the actuator i have this endpoint if i fire this actuator will give me all the important uh, urls and for us i need to open this one and if you see here let me fire this and this is giving the list of all the beans that was created by our container so let me search for emp controller so if you see here we have this emp controller and uh, the scope of uh, that uh, emp controllers is by default singleton and there is no dependency inside emp controller so we don't have anything here and look at the name of the controller so as i mentioned in our discussion that by default it will take emp controller but uh, with the smaller e we can change this and the scope of this also so let's try changing it let me go to our application and controller i'm going to change so to change the name we will use this uh, optional value attribute and here we will give the name so let's say we give name of something like employee and uh, if i want to change the scope we have another annotation for that we are changing scope and giving name as prototype if i save this let me stop the application let me restart the application if i go in my postman and refresh this now let me search this controller again so you can see here it updated the name and the scope is prototype now 
So this way, based on our requirement, we can change the, the setting. But by default, Spring have its own default uh, behavior and it, yeah, Spring, it will behave like that. So this uh, annotations are very helpful for us. And I recommend you all guys go to the online documentation of stereotypes and read about them. So that's all for now in this tutorial. See you in next one. And uh, till then, like, subscribe and keep learning. Thank you very much.